Hi. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, how we can find a good career uh, if you are into Linux, C++, or on the system side. I have prepared a checklist and I'll be covering up some topics which are super important. I prepared this list based on my experience uh, in taking interviews or attending interviews as well. Uh, and uh, the checklist is available in the description below. So uh, I have uh, the checklist open in my computer as well. Uh, one of the basic skill needed is algorithms and data structures. Suppose if you are applying for big companies like Google, Amazon, and that really helps you, not only in big companies, in all, all the companies, because uh, they may not look at your uh, skill set on different tools, but they will try to evaluate your problem solving skills. So knowledge in algorithms and data structure is very important. What I recommend here is maybe a tool called Codality. Uh, and you can uh, you can do the assignment based on your preferred programming language. They have multiple options. Uh, the focus is more on your problem solving skills. So that's one of the key skills you need to brush up. Then the next area is operating system. I'm from a Linux background, so I'll be talking more on the Linux side. Uh, at least you should know how the OS boots or the OS fundamentals. And if you are specifically into Linux programming or system programming, you surely need to look at the Linux fundamentals, which are process management, how you can create a process through fork system call, the child parent relationships, the process hierarchy and everything. The other one is IPC, inter-process communication. It includes semaphore, shared memory, all the other basics. Along with that, there are modern IPC mechanisms like DBUS, which we can have at least an overview. The next one is network programming. Network programming is super essential because I believe that there is no, uh, say, no value for a single computer. We are all working in a network, network of computers. So if you have knowledge in network programming, that really helps you in one or the other way. So maybe look at socket programming, understand different types of sockets, TCP sockets, UDP sockets, and all those things. Get an overview about the protocols like HTTP, FTP, basically all the protocols is on top of the basics TCP or UDP protocol. You can look at some of the basic RFCs as well if your if your future job uh, requires a lot of uh, network programming experience. And at least 25 mandatory Linux commands because sometimes uh, when you work on uh, Linux, you may not get the GUI. You may work on a remote shell and all those things and knowledge of command will really, commands will really help you. At least basic commands. Of course, you can refer the internet, but at least you need to have a hands-on experience so that it will really increase your efficiency. What I recommend, I, uh, I always uh, recommend to my friends or uh, the people um, that use Linux for your personal needs. Maybe you can install Linux in your personal laptop, start browsing Linux so that, you know, you will have a feeling. I mean, you can just use any flavor like Ubuntu, which is quite popular, or Fedora. Then at least if you can get an overview about shell scripting after understanding the commands, that will also really help you because sometimes you need to automate certain tasks. Then I'll come to the object-oriented mindset. Now Linux is over. Uh, if you're into C++, the first thing is uh, try to approach a problem 
or try to solve a problem within five minutes when you have it. You need to find a solution within five minutes. That kind of mindset you need to have. Suppose if someone is telling, giving you a problem, you should identify all the objects involved and all those things. So that should be the first. I mean, it's an object or it's a mindset. So if you learn C++, virtual polymorphism and all those things, it won't help you. How you can apply those concepts in the real world problems that make that different differentiate you. Uh, so before we go into the C++, you need to know the UML diagrams, at least basic class diagrams, sequence diagrams. Mostly when you work in a company, your architects may give you the design in, in the form of UML diagram, which you need to interpret. So UML diagram will be really useful or knowledge of UML diagram will be really useful there. And basic C++. Basics such as inheritance, polymorphism. Along with the, the basic C++, uh, you need to know STL, exception handling, mostly exception handling. But if you are in embedded systems, we won't use it. Uh, then certainly in the modern C++. Usually we we learn uh, C++ based on the 98 version uh, release. But you should know at least one of the modern C++, which is C++ 11, 14, or 17, because the things has been changed a lot. So at least get an overview of modern C++. Then design principles, design patterns. At least learn few design pa patterns. Uh, sol uh, singleton pattern, which is an Andy pattern. I'll call it as an Andy pattern. You should know why we should not use singleton pattern, factory, facade, or some basic patterns. And if you are an experienced programmer, you should explain any of the things from your uh, experience if you are attending an interview. No one wants the theory, theoretical knowledge. And uh, close to design patterns, there is another term called solid. It's a it's a five set of principles so you need to know the solid principles because it's very important for in object oriented analysis and design then i would really recommend you to learn one of the following three uh, frameworks one is qt qt uh, oco or boost uh, what i noticed from my experience also i learned all the c++ theory but I never get a chance to, I mean, in earlier days, maybe 15 years ago, uh, I never get a chance to solve a problem with those principles. I mean, those uh, object oriented or uh, C++ uh, theory. So this, if you're into Qt or Poco or Boost, uh, maybe I'll come to Qt maybe. In Qt, suppose if you're designing a GUI, you really know, uh, okay, why we need to use a virtual function to create a round button out of a push button, which is a standard class. So you will learn uh, this object-oriented C++ from a practical, uh, in a practical way. So that's more on the C++ areas. Then, uh, Test-driven development because that's very important because nowadays it's very popular as well. Uh, at least you need to know how to unit test your code. Your code should be testable. Uh, you should know unit testing. You, need, you should know mocking. How to mock another library call so that you can unit test your code. Suppose, uh, like for example, how to mock a socket to really mock the network operations. Along with that, you need to know code coverage. Uh, some of the tools I recommend maybe in this context is gtest, gmock, or any other framework. Uh, then, of course, close to that, uh, static code analysis. Maybe you can just look at one of the static code analysis tool, um, sonar or something like that. Sonar Cube, there are plenty of them available in the market and mostly, the companies will uh, 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 will have their own tools. Uh, then 
The next pointer is uh, build process and tools. You shall be able to explain how a C++ program is getting compiled, what's happening inside, what's compilation, uh, see what happens when you use a macro, uh, the linking process and everything. Um, so maybe you can use GCC as a reference compiler. Then uh, there are tools, build tools available, which are, I recommend Make and CMake, but there are plenty available like Gradle, Ninja, plenty more, and of course Windows uh, compiler tools as well. But these are a bit platform independent nowadays. Uh, so that you can create a project through this build tool or, or you can really work on a big project. You can start a big project, I mean, by creating the folder structure and everything using one of these big tool. Then the other important aspect is the debugging. GDB, Valgrind. Those two tools will really help you to debug issues. You can see the memory usage and all those things with Valgrind and you can really debug the code through GDP. There are GUI frontends available with most of the IDs, but still uh, it's uh, good to know the basics of GDB. Then uh, along with this skill set, if you have uh, one of the scripting knowledge that really helps you, like for example, Python, you don't need to be expert in that area, but at least if like you can get the code from internet, you can install a module through pip. A basic overview of Python will help you. I don't consider Python, at least for a C++ uh, Linux job profile, Python as a mandatory uh, tool, but it's nice to have. Sometimes you need to automate certain things. You need to develop your own in-house tools through Python, so it's easy. And Python is much easier if you know C++. Then uh, one of the other aspect is the source revision system because you will be working on big project. You need to know at least SVN, Git or CVS and I recommend Git. Nowadays, a lot of people use Git, of course, in open source as well. And there are other tools available, I mean, other build tools available, which are Perforce, clear case, but at least you should know the general process, how to check in a code, how to check out a code, what is code review and everything. And uh, coming to the software development life cycle, because other than the technical things, you should know how the software engineering works when you are in a team. These are very important. You, you can have an overview about Agile Scrum, V model, like what are the st you know basic steps in the V model, and like uh, requirement, elicitation, architecture, software development and implementation, verification, validation, a lot of phases are there in the V model. At least get an overview about it. It, it, it shows your hands-on experience. DevOps. DevOps is pretty new term. Maybe you can just look at some of the dev to DevOps tools like Jenkins, um, uh, and CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, basic concepts of DevOps. And most importantly, whenever you are learning something, try to, I mean, don't go for reading, you know, reading uh, and just watching videos, but rather read something and develop your own problem, programs, find a problem, create a solution and create a GitHub account. Because now you need to showcase even your small programs to the world. It's nice to have, I mean, we don't, it does not need to be a big project. It could be a small algorithm, binary search implementation, push it to your GitHub account and be a differentiator. That's all about uh, a career path or a checklist uh, for someone who is in Linux and C++. It could be applicable for someone who is new to the uh, uh, industry 
or who has some experience and who want to improvise his career, this checklist may help you. Thank you very much.